Hello everyone, this is the last uh, practice exercise for lesson number four, which is still talking about looking for the standard form of a quadratic function. Last time, we were able to discuss how to get the standard form or again the representative standard form of a quadratic function if we are given with intercepts and vertex. Right now, this is still connected to the vertex, and hence, we are still going to use the vertex form in this format. f of x is equal to, again, this is f, sorry for that, let me repeat, f of x is in the form of a times the binomial expression x minus h, but you square it, plus k where h is the x coordinate of the vertex and k is the y coordinate of the vertex a here could any value as it is the leading coefficient but just for this purpose of discussion we are going to treat a equal to one so that we could get one representative function of these four situations here Again, we are still going to use this because we are determining here the vertex. But unlike the previous video where the vertex is explicitly given, or just by looking at the graph, we could see it here, we are given with locations. And we need to understand this properly before we could come up with a vertex in its vertex form. Here, we are asked about the movement or the location of the vertex with respect to its distance from the x and the y-axis. But it doesn't mean that in like in number 1, 3 units above the x-axis, automatically the x-coordinate is 3. Or 3 units to the left of y-axis, automatically the y-coordinate is also 3. No, we need to understand how it works. Because if we talk about the x-axis, it should be the left-to-right movement. And if we talk about the y-axis, it should be the top-to-bottom or above-below movement. Let's talk about number one. Three units above the x-axis. So if we are going to have a Cartesian plane, sample Cartesian plane, this is, of course, our x-axis, and this is our y or f of x axis, pardon, let's just simply use y, and y is still the same as f of x. Three units above the axis means we have one, two, three units above the x axis. But that concern doesn't tell us about the x value yet. It's just telling us the above to below movement, which is the concern of y. And you have here three units to the left of y-axis. You have one, two, three. Three units to the left of y-axis is pertaining to the movement on the x-axis. So our vertex is somewhere here. Take note that our vertex is placed there, but we don't know the other situations or details, like whether is it opening downward or opening upward, or is the leading coefficient is greater than 1, which will make it narrower, or just between 0 to 1, which will make it wider. That is why, to remove that confusion, we are allowing the value of a be equal to 1, just for this uh, concerns, uh, will, uh, the coverage of these concerns. Either way, the vertex here is at the value of x, which is negative 3, and the value of y, which is 3. Notice one of which is negative, which is the x-coordinate, because we are talking about the movement towards the left. Saying left means negative. Going right, positive. As for the second coordinate, why it's positive? Because we're talking about above so above is positive, below is negative. Either way, you could just look into that concern on the Cartesian plane if you still have confusions. Now we have this, we're now going to substitute it on our 
uh, given uh, vertex form rather to get the equivalent vertex form and later determine the equivalent standard form. So let's start with this vertex form f of x again a is equal to 1 so let's just not write it there it will become x minus this is your h value and this is your k value notice that our given uh, vertex form is already subtraction so you have x minus h so it's x minus h but our h here is a negative value so don't forget to place it inside the parenthesis so that you could apply the double negative property later because if you're just going to treat this as x minus 4 you're just saying sorry it's not 4 pardon it's actually 3 so for a while so it's 3 if just if you're just going to treat it like that you're actually allowing or saying that the x coordinate of the vertex is positive so since it's negative that's why you need to place here sorry parenthesis and you will have plus k which is 3 this is not yet done the final vertex form is given to us by the simplified uh, sign here x plus 3 and you square that plus 3 here this is still your vertex form but since the question is about determining the standard form so out from this we are going to move further and simplify especially the square of a binomial and you still have plus 3 outside to do that, let's change the color to orange. This again is equivalent to 2x plus 3 multiplied to each other. It's incorrect to say power law and then you will have x squared plus 9 because the binomial is separated by an operation of either addition or subtraction. Here specifically addition, power law will not hold as true. So instead, we break it into two binomials, and you have here plus 3 right after. Let's transfer this process first here as we do the FOIL method so that we could have a proper, or what do you call this one, clearer process later. So we have the FOIL method. You have x squared. You will have plus 3x, another plus 3x, and then you have 9. That's 3 times x, 3x, another 3 times x, which is also 3x, and then 3 times 3, which is 9. Your standard, or rather, your quadratic form, x, x squared plus 6x, sorry, that's x, sorry, x plus 9. But this is not yet your final answer. Since you have plus the 3 here, so to return, that is just your result of multiplying two binomials, x plus 3, you have x squared plus 6x plus 9, which is also added by 3. So the final standard form for number 1, using this location of the vertex, with this vertex here, is x squared plus 6x plus 12. This is your final answer. So see, we are just given with the location. After that, we analyzed and deducted what's the vertex. And using that vertex, we pass through the vertex form and ultimately led to this standard form. Let's duplicate this process on the remaining three uh, situations here. So two units below the x-axis, again, you might want to draw a Cartesian plane. And this is your x-axis, and that's your y. 
two units below means you have one, two here. And one unit to the left means here. So the vertex is located somewhere here. And the correct use, again, uh, we are just lucky earlier because both situations have three. They just differ on signs. But here again, it doesn't mean that the movement is on uh, as compared to the x-axis. It's already the value of x. Because when you say below, it's up and down. That's y. And then the bottom one is to the left of y-axis. It doesn't mean that we use the y-axis. It's automatically the y-coordinate. Because the left-right movement is again the concern for x. The vertex here is given to as the value of negative 1 and negative 2. This is now your vertex. So our vertex form, sorry, vertex form using this as your h and this as your k, sorry, k. So you'll have this result. Again, when a is equal to 1, you will have x minus, again, a negative value, minus 1. You square that, plus your k, which is also negative. So please don't forget to place or enclose it parentheses to signify the sign properly. So the vertex form, as of the moment, double negative property, x plus 1. You get the square of that, and then you have minus 2 outside. This is your vertex form. Then we go to the standard form, where again, we look into this process as the product of 2x plus 1 multiplied by each other, then subtracted by 2 as the remaining term outside. Let's, again, separate this here using the FOIL method. That's FOIL. Sorry for my handwriting. So you will have x times x becomes x squared. And then you have 1 times x is x. x times 1, another x. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So your quadratic form is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Returning to our process, we use that result of the FOIL method. You'll have x squared plus 2x, pardon, plus 1 minus 2. So your final vertex form, or rather, sorry, Standard form is x squared plus 2x, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. This is now your standard form given the location of the vertex in this situation. Number 3. 6 units to the right of y-axis. Again, let's draw our representative graph on that. 6 units to the right, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and one, uh, 3 units rather below. 1, 2, 3. The vertex is at the intersection of both, and you will be given with the vertex, the x-axis, 6, y-axis, negative 3. This is again your h and this is your k. The vertex form by substituting the correct values again when a is 1 is x. Here our x coordinate which is the value of h is positive unlike numbers 1 and number 2 so you don't need to use double negative property here. Just simply x minus h and h is 6. So x minus 6 and you take the square of it. Plus you will have minus 3 outside which will give you a better form 
still vertex form in the meantime the square of x minus 6 you'll have minus 3 to continue with our standard form we again specify or emphasize that the square of the binomial means a product of the same binomial multiplied by itself minus 3 here outside. So we could separate again the foil method somewhere here so as not to disturb the process. You'll have x squared minus 6x minus 6x again. I simply uh, multiplying properly a negative 6 and negative 6 is positive 36 which will give you a quadratic form of x squared minus 12x plus 36 returning here you will have f of x equal to this quadratic form x squared minus 12x plus 36 but you have to subtract 3 from that. The final form is x squared. Okay? That's still minus 12x. And 36 minus 3 is plus 33. This is our answer here. Notice the process. Repeat the process. Come up with your own example later solve it and you will master the, the said skill but before that let's have one more and for the final here again you could draw a sample graph one unit to the right seven units above oh sorry my graph is a little bit shorter since it's a little bit higher here that's one two three four five six seven sorry for not properly scaled and you will have here so just by determining the proper vertex you will know that the vertex is located at one and seven and let's continue with the pro same process so this is your h you have x minus one no need to double negative property since your h is already positive. Plus 7 here as well. Notice that there are no other simplified forms that can be done because it's already positive here and that's already without double negative property. Just by first substitution, this is already your vertex form. As easy as, easy as, as, easy as it is. Then we continue. We could now start with the standard form because that's already our vertex form. Having this as two binomial expressions and then plus seven later. I will still need to have the FOIL method here just for the illustration. And you will have x minus one and x minus one. There are many uh, processes to do this. Uh, uh, even the square of the binomial, you still have the special product for that. But for some of us, it won't hurt us to try using this as long as it's not time pressured. Minus x, minus x, you will have plus 1. See so your quadratic form is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay? Returning here, you will have f of x equal to the, pro the result x squared minus 2x plus 1, and you will have plus 7 here. The final form, the standard form of a quadratic equation with vertex at this location is x squared minus 2x, 1 plus 7 is plus 8. This is the correct standard form, or 1 again, of a representative standard form for a quadratic function with vertex at this location or specifically at 1, 7. 
so you might want to use this as part of your analysis for getting the standard form of a quadratic function see you in the next one goodbye everyone